Stop the FOMO, you ever fear of missing out on one of the best TVs of 2021? I'm talking about the TCL 6 Series R646, otherwise known as a flagship 4K TV. <laughs> yes, flagship. What am I talking about? Well, I got really excited about TCL's move to Google TV, and I heard rumors that, you know, this TV is going to be a bit better than last year's 6 Series, so I had to get it. So I brought in the 55-inch, I put it up against my current favorite TVs, the Hisense U7G and the U8G, and the 6 Series R646 blew them away. <laughs> it wasn't even close. I was like, wait, is this a flagship? I mean, should I be pulling out the Samsung QN90A? So today, we're going to have a review comparing the 6 Series to the Samsung and the U8G, and you can determine for yourself whether this is a flagship and my closing thoughts at the end. This video was sponsored by DataCamp, teaching you about data science to further your career in this data-driven world. So I just finished the course, Data Science for Everyone, and now I know, deep learning. Yeah, that is the magic behind Sony's cognitive intelligence processor, right? Reality creation, because they take images, millions of images, compared it and processed it using deep learning to bring out slightly more brightness, maybe a bit more color saturation in certain parts of the image. It works. Everyone's saying that Sony is one of the best TVs you can buy this year. So 10 years ago, I was a product officer at a predictive analytics company. And all I can say is, where were you data camp? It would have been so much easier for me to hire or train people using data camps training system. So whether it's just an introduction to understanding what data science is and how it makes your TV better, or you want to go deep into it, Python, R, SQL, it's all there at DataCamp. Don't get left behind. Invest in yourself and become the data expert at your company. Use my link in the description below to check out the first chapter of any course for free. I love these sort of reviews where I am pleasantly surprised about how good the TV is. Got to be honest, I'm pretty excited about this TCL 6 Series. 2021 TCL 6 Series R646. And now before we get into the image quality, which is phenomenal, Let's talk about a few things, the improvements that are less image related and more just conveniences. First, Google TV, thumbs up. Definitely, I prefer this to Roku and I actually prefer TCL's Google TV version to the Sony Google TV. I find this a bit more intuitive. I love how quickly I can get to settings, change my settings and get back out. Sony takes a little bit of familiarity with the way they set it up, the menu system. I think the Google TV on the TCL works better. Good job, TCL. Next is, well, the price. It is $100 more. The 65 inch is $100 more at $1,300 than the Hisense U8G. So many of you are asking, wait a minute, if they're both similar, why not save $100 and get the Hisense U8G? So let's get this out of the way. No, the 6 Series for 2021 is definitely better than the U8G. Now the U8G is good and for the money, it's a great value. But now with the 6 Series there, I prefer and I will recommend even for an extra $100, the 6 Series R646 for 2021 over the Hisense. The last two years, Hisense has been my choice for editor's choice. This year, Samsung QN98 has been in the lead all year long, for LCD TVs at least. Obviously, we all love the Sony A80J, the A90J, the LG OLEDs. Those are great, but they're expensive. And the QN98, although expensive, I felt, you know, what they were able to do with an LCD TV is pretty awesome. But now we have a third contender for my editor's choice, and that is the TCL 6 Series R646. Okay, how good is it? So let's jump into the comparisons really quick. The TCL 6 Series R646, which is right down there, will be compared to the Samsung Q90A right up there. And of course the U8G below it, but it's off so you can't see it. And a quick surprise, I'm also gonna throw in the Sony A90J up there. How good is this TCL 6 Series? So at the end, we'll wrap it up. You tell me what you think as well in the comments below. Let's get into it. We're gonna use Pitch Black to test Blooming 
dimming zone control and how black the image can get. Now keep in mind, I've overexposed the image so that you can see the blooming more easily. The UHG does not get this bad. It is there, but not this bad. But you can see that even overexposed, the TCL is a match for the QN90A. Now staying with pitch black, I love how you can totally adjust the black and the shadow detail. Specifically, there are settings called black stretch and micro contrast. Now I don't know what black stretch does, I have yet to see any differences, but micro contrast is kind of cool. You can see slight changes in the subtle shadow detail or brightness in certain areas. Maybe this is TCL's version of the XR effect, except it's not intelligent. You actually have to enable or disable it. I like the effect, so I'm gonna leave it on. Next up, we're gonna test black bars and local dimming with the greatest showman. And this is the first time I've seen another LCD TV brand do as well as the Samsung. You can see that there is a little bit of black crushing here. I think it's acceptable and well worth the cost to get those black bars. As good as the black bars are, the QN98 is still a touch better. Look at this scene. But in the Spears and Muscle test disc, the TCL does pull out a win. Check out the slight blooming on the QN98. Yes, I had to overexpose to show it, but a win is a win. Excellent local dimming and blooming control by the TCL in this very difficult scene. Next up is a scene from Sweet Tooth to demonstrate the dynamic range of OLED and how its infinite contrast makes everything pop. Check out the brightness of the windows and the darkest area and the level of detail. The LCD TVs come close, but not quite. Next up, the Netflix original Lucifer will demonstrate the superiority of OLED because it does not bloom. LCD TVs, even the best anti-blooming algorithm and local dimming is still going to bloom just a little. And last but not least, out of the box color accuracy with the greatest showman. Sony A90J and QN90A are both calibrated, but the UHG and TCL are not, and yet still look pretty good. All right, let's get out of here and wrap it up. Wow, TCL, you deserve an applause. What you've done at the $1,300 mark Definitely, I believe, is better than Sony X90J. I'm getting the Sony X95J, but I suspect the way it's performing, <laughs> I don't know. Sony's going to have a hard time beating it for more. I'm not going to predict that it's definitely better than X95J because I don't have it here yet. But Sony, you got a big challenge ahead of you. Let's see if you can keep up. And lastly, Samsung QN90A. Is it possible? Is it possible that a TV with less than a quarter of your dimming zones can match you? Now, it didn't outright beat the Samsung. In a few tiny items, it may have edged it. And there are a few things the Samsung did better. Let's talk about the things that the TCL 6 series, I know confidently matches a Samsung or comes so close as to be indistinguishable. Black levels, I am so impressed. Blooming control, you saw it. With few exceptions, where the Samsung may be a touch better, the TCL was right there neck and neck. And this is the first time I've seen a TV with so few dimming zones keep up. So, hey, it is all about processing. They caught up to Samsung with less dimming zones. Wow. And lastly, well, you have Dolby Vision and Samsung doesn't. Is that the edge right there? Okay, so that's what it does either better or as good as Samsung. There's one thing that Samsung does a touch better. Okay, let's say two things. First is I feel that the motion where it's close to cinematic, where you're at that edge between stutter and non-stutter, Samsung edges out the TCL. And the Sony just edges out the Samsung. But it is close. One more thing that the Samsung, I feel, edges out the TCL is brightness the samsung <laughs> actually the tcl was brighter than the samsung and then in the middle of my review it got an update i think to 1708 or something like that and now the samsung is brighter it's like what did, did you know i was going to review the tcl so i have to redo everything so the samsung i believe is about as bright or almost as bright as the uhg 
in its most accurate movie mode. I mean, I was pretty impressed. Now, the specular highlights, for some reason, Samsung hasn't been able to push it to that brightness yet. It's better, but still a touch behind the U8G. Well, it is behind, but it's better than it was before. And the 6 Series is actually very good. Not quite as bright as the Hisense, but could it be a touch brighter than the Samsung? And that just amazed me that TCL was able to do this. So, <laughs> okay, tell me what you think. Does this TV excite you? And is it worthy of the best value TV of 2021? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stop the FOMO. <laughs>